Welcome to the CLI Essentials mini-series. Today, fuzzy finding with FCF. Fuzzy finding is everywhere. You find it in your operating system, you find it in Vim, you find it in your browser, of course. It is one of the most powerful productivity principles and FCF brings it to the command line. In this video, we're gonna explore what makes FCF different from other text matches like rep and how to use it. We will cover the different kinds of text matches, practical examples for FCF, how to configure FCF, and how to use it in scripts in Neovim. This is part four of the CLI Essentials mini-series, so let's jump in. So let's talk about interactive versus non-interactive text matches. FCF is an interactive text matcher. That means you type in input dynamically and based on that, it gives you results. And then you can choose one of the results. Example, if I wanted to find a file in my console, I would go like this. I would go like find here, type file and pipe it into FCF. And then I would search for my file like program CS. And then you would see that based on the input, my results changed. And this is what makes it interactive. Grab is different. Grab is a non-interactive text matcher. That means you get a list of filtered results based on your one-time input. Example, when I do a .NET build like so, then you see that in my current project, I have an error. And if I have not only one error, but more of them and warnings and a lot of stuff, then this output of .NET build can get pretty spammy. And I don't want that. What I can do now with grab is this. I can go now and say .NET build, and I can pipe it with grab and look for error only. I look for this particular string and then I get only the output that has this particular string. Boom. This is grab, non-interactive. And there's a couple of alternatives, of course, interactive, non-interactive for FCF and grab, but this is not what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to focus on FCF. Now, why is that useful? Given I have a file like this with multiple lines in it, and I want to choose one line with FCF, I can do that easily. I can close my file. I can go FCF, and then I can load the file with the angle bracket into my FCF and choose the line I want to choose. I could also use cat and meow the items text through a pipe into my FCF, like so. Same result, this time cherry. Quick refresher, the difference between the pipe and the anger bracket is this. When I want to try something like this, where I have a console output, it would give me that. No such file or directory. This is because this operator right here expects a file from you, while the pipe expects console output. And this is what we get through cat, right? We don't pass in the file directly and then pipe it. We use cat because cat gives us the output of the file. And this is what we then pipe into FCF. But the truth is, you won't use FCF so much as a CLI tool from the terminal. In most cases, you will grab one result with FCF and put it into a variable to process later. Example, I have the var choice right here, which equals dollar sign. And then we would just use our FCF command like before, right? Like cut and then the items text and pipe that into FCF, close it. And now it asks us right away, and then we set it to cherry. And now we could echo this exact var right here, right? Echo choice, and there we go, cherry. And for this one, I have to peep into my little article right here, we have the configuring FCF section and it says FCF can be configured via inline flags like so. So I have the normal FCF command and then I have flags like color and reverse. And we want to check out what they do in a second. Let me copy this, go back to my terminal, paste this right here. And then you see that the colors are different and the search bars at the top, it's reversed. Before it was down, now it's at the top. Versus if I only did FCF without any power, you see, see that? It's different, right? Now, you don't have to use the flags all the time. 
You can also use the FCF default opts variable and just set it to your liking and put this into your Zish RC. And you, you see that how everything comes together, right? Like before we talked about Zish and now we're talking about variables in the Zish RC. Anyways, I copied this one right here back to terminal to nvim Zish RC. And then I have right here somewhere, I put it here, save that one, source my Zish RC again, type FCF, and then you see I have the configuration loaded. And there's a lot of flags you can put in. When I go back, I see here layout and UI flags, right? You have the height as well that you can adjust, reverse, we just talked about this. And we have behavior and matching flags as well. Multi lets you pick multiple items. And now exact is an interesting one because this is the flag that actually made me switch from telescope and NeoVim to FCF Lua. I made a video about this here somewhere. You can find the full list of options on the FCF GitHub page, of course. Let me open this real quick right here. And then you see, you see a lot of stuff. Like this is very well documented. You can do a lot of things with FCF but this is outside the scope of this video. So what's next? So when we scroll down the article, then you see we have a what's next section right here. Number one is in NeoVim, we combine fuzzy finding with search context. That means buffers, LSP symbols, etc. And like a very quick example of that, I'm back in my code. If I provoke syntax gibberish right here, I have now a shortcut that gives me all the errors that I have in my document. Right, I can also just find text through all my files through grep. I can also find whatever's in my file, like so, right? It's a lot of lot of things. We will talk about this in the workflow videos, of course. Same is true for the shell scripts. Again, one example is the TMUX sessionizer. I will not show this right now. Don't want to spoil too much. But this is what's going to be discussed in the workflow videos as well. So really stay tuned, much more to come. Have a lovely week. Bye-bye.